Welcome back, everybody. Eric, you're going to talk about the most important position for each major sport. Take it away. Yeah. Um, when I was thinking of an idea this week, Alex actually sparked my interest with this whole Mount Rushmore talking about the greatest, greatest guys of each sport, men and women, as we found out earlier. Um, but I'm going to start with basketball, the most crucial position to me, the center position, a.k.a. the five. Normally the tallest, strongest player on the team, most body mass, uh, as we've seen around the league, average about six feet, 10 inches or taller. This player is the rim protector and the defender, the guardian of the basket itself. Uh, their ability to protect their own zone, which is closest to the rim, in other words, is the most critical to me for high scoring efficiency and rebounds. In other words, second chances. Uh, when you have those, usually your team does better. Most teams that are dominant or successful usually have a big, important center. Look at the Lakers with Anthony Davis. Um, look at other teams with good centers. <laughs> look at the Rockets. They get rid of their center. They're terrible. They're a joke. Fuck the Rockets. Uh, probably the best one I've seen. Shaquille O'Neal, seven feet, uh, one inches tall, 325 pounds, won four NBA championships, an MVP award, a Rookie of the Year award three finals MVP awards, the list goes on. I think if the Lakers didn't have Shaq during those times, they may have not been as dominant. Of course, they had Kobe, but, I, you know, pulling the whole three-peat uh, was necessary with Shaq. Um, James, you talked about basketball, Mount Rushmore earlier. Tell me about your position and greatest player of that position. Who is the opposite of the center? That would be the point guard. Yeah, you're wrong. The point guard is definitely the most important player on the team by far. That's your play. That's your player coach on the court. He's going to be the primary ball handler. He's going to call plays. He's going to make sure people are where they're supposed to be. He gets. He can even call an audible, like on the court. Can a center do that? No, because he's trying to box out some guy and trying to best to get up there and use his mass and whatnot to get rebounds. No, dude, he's not the best player in the. And then the no. point guard misses the shot, and then the center gets it back, and he gives it to the point guard, and makes it again. So is that why the league right now is going towards a phase where they don't really use big men anymore? Do you see Yao Ming out there? Do you see Shaq out there anymore? No, you don't. That's too much. Go back what and are you forth. going with this? It goes back and forth, dude. It's like <laughs> hockey. You want speed and size. Right. Okay. Anthony right, Davis isn't really a uh, center, dude. He's a power forward. Centers don't really go out there and shoot threes. Does Dwight Howard go out there and shoot threes? Very rarely. No, he sucks. That's why. Okay, for sure. That's why you are talking about him earlier. Uh, Anthony Davis, not a center. <laughs> You're wrong. He's a power forward. That's what he's on 2K, so that's what's right. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, some of the most notable guys, though, CP3, we saw that in the playoffs in this last season as a whole. Uh, he pretty much brought the Thunder into contention using his leadership and assist skills. Without him, the Thunder would be nothing. Uh, he pretty much ran the show there. 17 points per game, 7 assists per game. Um, when it comes to players as a whole, just history that I've seen, couple greats at point guard. Steve Nash, Hall of Famer, 14.3 points per game, 8.5 assists per game. Jason Kidd, also another Hall of Famer. And Steph Curry, first and foremost. Like, he's known more for his three-point shooting and scoring and all that. But he, first and foremost, he puts people in the right position, runs the screen and roll, finds the open man, and runs that offense to perfection. Yeah, I mean, those guys are pretty good. Uh, we can agree to disagree. I think point guards are pretty important, too. <laughs> <laughs> They're all pretty important, but you know, we don't we don't want to all agree here, anyways. Uh, let's <laughs> let's switch it over to baseball. Um, oh God. To me, I think we could all agree that the pitcher is the most important in baseball. It's kind of like the hockey goalie. Uh, they literally dictate the game pace. They control how the game ends up. You could really throw a fucking game away, or you can dominate this game and have all your pitches based and just your entire defense of the game. Uh, your body events chuck a baseball over 90 times in one night, especially against someone not much farther away from you with a giant twig of wood ready to swing back at you. Uh, pitchers have all types of different styles. Whatever works for that player may just get the job done. It is a highly injury-prone position in most of the major sports, probably one of the toughest mental sports, mental positions I've ever seen in a sport. Um, most important pitcher I've ever seen. I know our baseball guys may just fucking scowl at this. Randy Johnson, a.k.a. the big unit. 
Uh, four times Cy Young award winner, uh, consistent 2.63 ERA during those years. Also KO'd 329 batters in five straight seasons. Won in all five of his appearances in the 2001 NLCS and World Series with a pair of complete game shutouts. And those five important playoff games, insane 1.08 ERA. Also accidentally killed a bird and made it explode uh, on a gnarly pitch, just a straight heater. And it was just a, a, one of the most freakish events in sports history when this bird just flew right in front of him. Was, I think it was a pigeon. I don't remember what kind of bird, Alex or Tyler. You guys can correct Whatever me. Whatever bird it was, it poofed. I think it was a <laughs> Philadelphia Eagle, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, um, whatever it was, it exploded. It exploded and completely <laughs> vanished from the face of the earth. Yeah, Philly might just murder me for saying that. Uh, Traden, you talked baseball earlier. Tell me your position and your greatest player of that position. You guys are giving me the sport that really, like, makes me uncomfortable because I feel like I'm going to sound like a fucking idiot. But um, I definitely think that the starting pitcher is the most critical um, position. The entire kind of game is dictated around the pitcher. You know, you hear it in all of our discussions. Is this team have good pitching? Does this team have good pitching? That's all, that's all we talk about. Um, you know, a bad pitching game for a starter can, can and usually dispels disaster for, your, for the team. I mean, you know, we, we see it time and time again. Um, every play starts with the pitch, and and the difficulty of that pitch, to, you know, kind of dictates what happens. I mean, make an easy pitch, and you get a Tatis grand slam when you're down by seven runs. You know, if you pitch well, you can alter opponents, you know, alter the opponent's confidence at the plate. Turns a slugger into a shrugger. He's done. He's out. He's done. Um, the pitcher has the greatest influence on the outcome, in my opinion. Um, and I, you know, it, it's hard to name a championship team that didn't have a high caliber starting pitcher. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that you guys can name a bunch, but I, there's not very many. I can't imagine. Um, <laughs> I don't really know who to pick other than Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> and keep it down, Dodgers fans. Keep it down because it's going to give you guys a hard on. I know. For 13 seasons, Kershaw has been dominating the plate. 175 wins, 76 losses in the regular season, holding the best record in the league multiple seasons. He has a very strong career, RB, uh, 2.43 ERA, posting best ERA for straight seasons between 2011 and 2014. Um, he's been in the top eight, at least in the top eight for the Cy Young votes in eight of his 14 seasons, posting three Cy Young awards and one league MVP. Um, he, his record kind of speaks for itself, but it's not all great. He wilts and he wilts like a half in October and that is the biggest setback for him. Um, he's, he has a pretty below average numbers in the postseason, or I guess average to below average and ask any Dodgers fan how that's really turned out when it comes to Clayton Kershaw in the, in the, in the um, postseason. But regardless of his questionable postseason stats, he's one of the best pitchers I've ever seen. That's all I got for baseball. Yeah. Kershaw is, I got to give it to him, a solid pitcher. The Dodgers could definitely use him right now. Um, but let's move on uh, to football. For me, the most important position, the safety. This is your safety, man. Your last line of defense to make a stop against the other team. Safeties are covering the middle and silence of the field usually against the deep threats and passes. Usually... They're the most reliable tackle, tacklers and the hardest hitters on the field. What? Okay. <laughs> Dude, no. What? <laughs> All right, hold on. And are you recognizing a trend here? Yeah, for me, it's the idea of defense, your gatekeepers, your guardians, a pitcher, a center, a hockey goalie, of course, a safety. Okay, if your safety is shit, then you're just like the Eagles and you just lose a bunch of games. You don't have anyone that makes tackles. You lose in the end of the game. You lose the whole game. You lose. Uh, what position has the most tackles on the team, typically? <laughs> Safety. Linebacker. Safety has the most important tackles. The most important tackles. They also have the most blown coverages. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So you want a good safety. And they must be the smartest defenders out on the field. They're used so even though they can only cover coverage. one side of the field, you want them to cover the entire thing. Uh, they they don't play really have a the team way. from scoring. <laughs> like, I'm just pull letting them go. Up, up. Like, no, dude. Okay. They can, they, can make a, they can make a play happen where they stop a team from scoring or winning a game, like losing a Super Bowl, like the Seahawks. <laughs> to me, that's important as fuck. The best safety Malcolm I've Butler seen. Malcolm Butler is the cornerback. 
Yeah, but safety's just like it. <laughs> but even harder and better and more important. Uh, Troy Paul and Malu won two Super Bowls with the Steelers, eight-time Pro Bowler inducted into the Football Hall of Fame this year. 770 tackles, 32 picks, 14 fumbles forced, three defensive touchdowns. One of the true commanders of that Steelers defense for many years of their success, which I watched them win two Super Bowls. Good thing they didn't win any more than that. Alex, you're probably going to disagree with me here, but, you know, we can't all agree. <laughs> uh, what do you got? Yeah, I did not have the safety. That was not what I was expecting you to say. <laughs> uh, I mean, really the answer is quarterback, but I don't want to talk about the quarterback. My actual pick was the linebacker. Um, he is the quarterback of that defense. And as we all know, defense wins championships. Uh, they're really the signal caller, signal caller of that defense. They can call audibles just like the quarterback can. Um, if you have a weak linebacking core, your defense is fucked. And then you have no chance. Um, some great ones. Bobby Wagner for the Seahawks. Um, those were legendary Seahawks defensive teams. And Luke Keekley, uh, who just retired. Uh, one of the greatest linebackers of all time uh, down at the Carolina Panthers. Safety, though. Wow. <laughs> what a okay. pick. Wow. At, at, least, at least we both said defense. Just that is one true. Guy is like ahead of the other guy by like 10 yards on the field when they, when they set up. James, I know the football wasn't yours, but you've been just going Trump with the arms over there. Uh, wh- what, are you, what are you thinking? I was going to go with center. Uh, the offensive side on the offensive line, which is very important. But those guys make the line calls, um, whether to shift your line to the left or the right based off pass protection. They call out blitzes. They are the first per- – they're the only person that touches the ball on every single play. Um, without a good center, you don't have a good line. Without a good line, your quarterback gets killed, you don't get offense, you lose the game. Simple as that. Boom. The, ever since episode one, like, we always just revert back to talking O-line. So I, I remember I asked, is the O-line important? I guess they are. Um, so last sport, let's get into it. We're going to talk hockey. Trading may, may say a word or two. Who knows? They'll probably agree with me. Of course, it's the goalie position is the most important, most responsible player, dictator of the final score, uncharted guardian of the ice kingdom. Hockey goalies have to have the biggest varieties of skill sets, positioning, Ability to fill spaces, even joint and tissue mobility in their body, quick and swift reaction times, rebound control, starting offensive clears and breakouts. The list goes on. Probably in my eyes, the hardest position of all major sports. Extremely mental. And even you see this, some amazing goalies shit the bed come playoff time. Even if they've led their teams in the past to a successful championship, they get the yips. Somehow it doesn't work out for them. It's weird. You think, what the hell, last year – you know, Bennington last year pulled his team all the way to game seven, winning a cup this year. Terrible. It can all be about the hot hand, which we've talked about before, and the timing of it. Uh, this is probably why goalies are weirdos, too. They're just always in their head. Uh, best goalie I've seen, maybe a little biased guy, Jonathan Quick. This guy was critical for the both LA Kings' two fruitful Stanley Cups. His first run, a 1.40 GAA which he ended up winning the Conn Smythe that year. That was his first Stanley Cup appearance ever. Two years later, he was one of the ultimate Ice Wizards um, guarding defense, winning three game sevens on the road for the first time in Kings franchise history for their goaltenders. Uh, I literally remember him saving series with, with in, insane saves. Tyler, you talked hockey earlier. Let's hear what you got to fucking say. <laughs> I talked a lot of hockey on this podcast. I love it. A little change of pace for me. I disagree with goalie being the most important position. Mine, it's a close second to the centerman for hockey. Traden, oh, there you go. That's, a, that's, a, that's an acceptable nod. Okay. Uh, for me, the centerman is the most important. It's a high-level skill position. Uh, you need to be flexible in positioning. You're covering the most ice of any player. Uh, you need to be strong, you need to be fast, exceptional vision, intelligence, and creativity with the puck. Um, also need to play high-level defense. So you, it's really, you need the most skill of any player that's out there on the ice overall as an athlete and as a hockey player. Um, little fun facts for you. Of the 92 Hart Trophy winners, 50 of them have been centermen. 
and then uh, and then 19 centers have won the Conn Smythe Trophy, which is more than any other position. So looking at those stats, those are guys that I think the NHL and the overall league respects as the best players in the ice most of the time. Um, for me, the best current defenseman, I, I'm going to pick two real quick. Um, overall, in my lifetime that I've seen it for the whole career, Sidney Crosby. I know I wasn't giving him love earlier, trading, so here we go. Uh, I do have some respect for that guy, the kid. Uh, amazing centerman, uh, one of the best of all time at that position. Um, currently, in, in terms of pure athleticism and skill, the best centerman in the league right now is Connor McDavid. Um, hands down he's he's just the best the best mm-hmm. centerman out there uh a few honorable mentions though patrice bergeron nathan mckinnon steven stamkos and my boy kopi anze kopitar one of the best uh led his team to two to two cups uh he's personally my favorite centerman for obvious reasons kings fan go kings go kopi's my boy so yeah nhl centerman a lot of center talk tonight in both two different sports who would have thought uh trading what are your thoughts yeah, I, I think you guys said it perfectly. You could have picked either of those two. I'll, I'll have that conversation with you, with you any day. Um, I half expected you to pick left wing, Eric, because you've been kind of like <laughs> picking the craziest. That's my thing. position, dude. No, right wing. <laughs> yeah, well, right now I think right wing is more value than left wing. <laughs> um, uh, but – so I think I agree with you. Uh, you could pick either of the two. I'll have that conversation. Um, to pick Jonathan Quick over someone like Martin Brodeur or, or fucking anybody else is kind of crazy. Jonathan Quick's an amazing goaltender. He really, really is. But I don't know if he, he is in the top echelon of ones that have been in our era. You know, if you look at Martin Brodeur, Alex Adam on the, on the Mount Rushmore. He is technically in our era. We can still consider him. We saw him. Most of us did. Yeah. You know who he lost to in a uh, Stanley Cup one time? Jonathan Quick. Yeah. Uh, and I'll end it on that, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, no I'll, I'll give you that. He is amazing. Um, and Tyler, to say your centers and to pick the centers that you picked for sure, I would say if you're talking about a 200-foot game, um, the best centerman right now is um, – uh, what the hell? Uh, <laughs> Nathan McKinnon for sure. Um, cause he just has that defensive prowess that McDavid has a little bit of catching up to do. Yeah. Um, I think we, uh, hit everything on the head. You know, I had all my crazy picks, but I justified them and now everyone understands why they're the most important positions in sports. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Eric. Mm-hmm.